Welcome everyone to part three on compression. In this part, we're going to talk about manual decompression and compression commands, rolling up or merging chunks upon compression, and policies to automate your compression process. First, manual compression. Even though we suggest automating your compression with a policy, there are times where you will need to manually compress a chunk or a group of chunks. So for more control over that, we offer a compress chunk command that can compress one or multiple chunks. To compress multiple chunks, you can do that using a nested show chunks command and designating whatever chunks you need to compress. Manual compression will be useful for backfilling, testing, and even troubleshooting. Manual decompression. Decompressing can be necessary for inserting and in rare cases, updating data in compressed chunks. The reason for that is because it's more computationally expensive versus doing this in uncompressed data. So if you have a large volume of data, you may have a need to decompress chunks to improve your backfilling and again, in rare cases, your update performance. Some additional notes, you should always leave additional storage capacity to decompress chunks for actions like backfilling or inserts if you have a non-append only use case. You should also stop or pause compression policy on the hyper table. You are decompressing before starting your backfill, and that's to ensure it stays in a decompressed state until your backfilling process is complete. Rolling up or merging uncompressed chunks when compressing. In timescale 2.9 and newer, you can merge multiple uncompressed chunks into an existing compressed chunk using the parameter timescale db compress chunk time interval. The ways that can benefit you is further optimizing storage on your uncompressed data by allowing you to set a smaller uncompressed chunk time interval and be more aggressive with your compression policy, therefore cutting down on storage space for your uncompressed data. In a situation like we talked about in part two where you have only 500 unique rows and you're trying to get closer to that thousand row bundle, you could merge chunks together to get closer to that if you don't have a unique value that is even close to 1000. Merging chunks can also cut down on the number of database objects and each database object requires resources to maintain and you can cut down on your resource usage by decreasing the number of database objects by merging. Some other notes, default setting of compress order by is time descending, as we talked about in part two, and on repeated chunk recompression during rollup, you can see a steep performance penalty, and to get around that, you can set order by to time ascending to try and avoid that penalty. And just another mention, mostly we recommend merging for append-only use cases, because when you decompress, you are decompressing a larger amount of data. And we also typically recommend merging two chunks, at least to start, until you see how this works in your use case. Compression policies. Compression policies allow you an automatic background way of compressing chunks in hypertables or CAGs after a specified age. These policies can only be created on hypertables or CAGs that have compression enabled. You can use the add compression policy function to set up the policy, and you can use the remove compression policy function to remove. Some additional notes, you wanna specify the time zone to mitigate any issues with daylight savings times. And with anything, you want to regularly review and adjust policies based on data usage patterns and performance metrics to ensure optimized database performance. That's it for part three. We'll see you in part four. Thank you.